Good morning, everyone. We're about to start um, our faculty orientation. The recording is on. Welcome to everyone. Mr. Steven, you can go ahead now. Okay. Good morning, everyone. And welcome, uh, especially to our new students who have logged on. And um, <clears throat> we are glad that you chose the University of Belize. We're glad that you chose the Faculty of Science and Technology. The best faculty at the University of Belize. Uh, we are in new and un unchartered waters, unprecedented times, uh, but we want to uh, make this orientation as realistic as possible. So I am going to ask you, wherever you are, if you're in your bed, to get out of your bed and to stand at attention for the singing of the national or for the playing of the national anthem. Okay. Afterwards, remain standing for the opening prayer. Please stand as we hear the playing of the national anthem. Okay, please remain standing as we look to God in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to give you thanks and praise for who you are. We thank you for the sovereign God that you are. We thank you for the fact that you are all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present. We thank you that you are a faithful God. You have been faithful to us as a country. Uh, you have been faithful to us as a university. You have been faithful to us as a faculty. And so we thank you for this opportunity that we have to uh, introduce our new students to the best faculty here at the best university in the country of Belize. Uh, we realize 
however, that we're faced with unprecedented challenges. And so we pray for your wisdom for us as administrators and faculty members within this faculty, as for the administrators of the entire University of Belize, for the leadership of our country as we chart these unprecedented waters. We are cognizant of the increase in number of COVID-19 cases. And so we pray for wisdom for our students, faculty, staff, administrators alike, that we will seek to adhere to the social distancing protocols, the health protocols that have been established, and that uh, we will seek to do our best to uh, gain uh, our education for, for the students, and that as, as lecturers, as faculty, we will seek to do our best in delivering uh, material in our different courses uh, to our students. We pray for wisdom as we uh, go throughout this semester, as we go throughout this academic year, and that uh, we will all seek to do our part in ensuring that the University of Belize continues to be the best institution in this country at the tertiary level and that our faculty continues to shine brightly within this University of Belize. So we thank you for this time and we ask for your blessing upon all that will be said and done uh, this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Mr. Stephen. Good morning once again to everyone and to our students, congratulations. We are pleased to know that you have been admitted into the University of Belize. My name is Shirlene Enrique Savory, and I am the Dean for the Faculty of Science and Technology. We are so grateful that you have selected UB to continue your education. One of our goals is to make sure that our faculty and staff are able to support you in all ways possible. What we want you to do while you're here with us um, at the university, or whether it's two years, whether it's four years, we want you to focus on your education. We will challenge you. And this is to make sure that you are prepared for the next journey. So when you complete UB, you will be able to transition to whatever that next step is easily, and you'll be great ambassadors for the University of Belize. The Faculty of Science and Technology offers students a variety of choices and opportunities to advance um, their education. Most of our program are offered on Belmopan campus. However, for this semester, all of your courses will be either blended or online due to the COVID-19 pandemic and our effort to keep you safe. The Faculty of Science and Technology always strive for excellence in our program and the success is due to dedicated faculty and staff. We are here for you, provided that you <laughs> adhere to safety protocol, you can always access us, whether it's virtually or if needs be, right? If needs be, then you can access us um, face to face. Our faculty are located in Central Farm, in Punta Gorda, in Belize City, and also here in campus. But because we are online, we are easily accessible. You can easily set up an, uh, a, a, a meeting and we can see face to face. We can meet virtually using um, whatever platform the lecturer or the faculty um, chooses to. I hope to see you soon, whether it's virtually or face to face. Welcome to UB, welcome to the FST family. So for the next um, five minutes or so, what I will be doing, I will be <clears throat> going over um, our mission, our vision, and sharing with you the overall structure of the organization 
and explain to you where FSD fits and the order of operation um, within our organization. So for the, um, our faculty mission, <clears throat> The Faculty of Science and Technology provide relevant and accessible accredited programs through quality instruction research and service. The faculty is oriented to address scientific, technological, and environmental needs that will contribute toward national development by producing critical thinking, confident, entrepreneurial, lifelong learners. Our mission. Our vision, the Faculty of Science and Technology um, vision, our plan, our hope, we, we will be student-centered and will advocate a culture of excellence in, natu in natural and applied sciences. It will be an agent of change through cooperation with stakeholders and by promoting socioeconomic and environmental responsibility. There are some faces that you have seen at, um, during the um, university orientation, but again, we have to make sure we show you these faces. And, and these are the people that I would, I would like for you to remember. And when you see them, you will know who they are. You'll be able to identify who they are. The head of the university is President Professor Clement Sankat, right? And he's, he oversees the university. He's assisted next by the Vice President, Dr. Marian Simon. And then we have the Dean of Students, Dr. Martin Cuellar. You have seen him also um, uh, during the um, university orientation. And the overall structure of the um, university, we have the President on the top, we have followed by the Vice President, then we have the Dean. With regards to the Faculty of Science and Technology, we fall right under the Vice President. Now, the Dean have um, the, off the, the Campus Administrator for, uh, for Agriculture. We have the Engineering Chair in Belize City. We have the Math, Physics, and Information Technology Chair. And we have the Science Chair. So there are four um, persons that, um, that, that, that reports directly to the dean or that the dean supervised. Now, under the campus administrator for Central Farm, the person is responsible to um, manage and administer or supervise lecturers and field workers. For the engineering chair, um, he, he or she supervised um, secretary, lecturers, and technician. And for the Math, Physics, and Information Technology Chair, we have the Secretary and we have the Lecturers. And for the Science Chair, we have Secretary, a Secretary, we have Lecturers, and then we have Technician. So this is the overall um, organogram for FSD. And, and you can see where um, the Dean is positioned in the overall structure. Now, from for this, something is missing, which is the Dean right hand. So the next organogram shows you her position um, that person because that person is a key person is um, in the department or in the in the faculty and um, that's the person that you'll go to a lot if you need to access uh, me if I'm not available and that is uh, my secretary so I am um, in this organogram you can see where the secretary is positioned so we have the dean we have um, my secretary we have the four um, chairs the three chairs and the campus administrator and then we have the lecturers, field workers, secretary, and technician. Now, these are the faces that you will be, um, that I want you guys to, to remember. And with time, you will, you will get to meet us. You'll get to meet us, whether it's virtually, when you set up a, a, a virtual meeting with us, or you'll get to meet us um, as the semester, or as the, um, as the semester um, progress. So at the top, you have yours truly, right? And then we have um, Ms. Zoe Zatina. She's the campus administrator for Central Farm. We have Mr. Emery Cayetano. He is the chair for engineering. We have Mr. Stephen Lewis, which is, he is the chair for, uh, we call it MPIT, and that stands for Math, Physics, and Information Technology. And we have Dr. Apollonio Aguilar. He's the chair for the science um, department. Now, 
I'm going next to these four beautiful young, la um, young ladies. I'm gonna say they're young, young ladies that are bottom because these young ladies are the person who makes things happen in our office and in our department. So these are the, normally the first person you want to contact and they will make things happen for you. They will assist you as much as possible. My dean is um, Miss Judy Ellis, right? Miss Judy Ellis. And then we have, there is one person missing from here and, and I think it's the secretary from um, Central Farm for, for the agriculture student, right? My apology for that. Um, but you will be meeting um, the secretary when you go on campus, you'll be able to see her face to face, right? Um, then we have Miss Crystal Rodriguez. Miss Crystal Rodriguez is the chair for engineering department in Belize City. So she's the go-to person when you're in Belize City. Uh, even if you are not engineering student and you cannot access us in um, Belmopan, Go to Miss Crystal in Belize City and she will be able to connect you or to assist you. She's very knowledgeable about the entire, um, um, the entire faculty. We have Miss um, Diane Rodriguez, Oliva. She's currently on leave until I think the first week in September, but she is the chair for Mr. Stephen Lewis. And um, again, she's very knowledgeable about the entire program. So if you have any issue, any difficulty, any question, and you cannot get through, through to any one of us, please go to Miss Diane, go to Miss Crystal, or contact Miss um, Judy. For science, we have Miss um, Leilani Ambadio. Again, very versed with the, with the faculty, very versed with her department. So make sure you contact um, Miss Lani if you have any question regarding science, or it doesn't necessarily um, have to be with science. It can be any question regarding the faculty of science and technology. All these ladies, including the central form um, secretary, are very versed with, the, are, they're familiar with the ins and outs of the program. And if they cannot um, answer your question, they will find somebody that can assist you um, with, with your question or your concern. So these are the faces, these are the main persons. And again, our faculty, we, um, the, the Faculty of Science and um, Technology, we have four faculty. We have the Faculty of Agriculture, we have the faculty, uh, I'm not faculty, my apology, the department. We have four departments. We have the agriculture department. We have the engineering department. We have the information, supposed to be math, physics, and information technology department, MPIT. And we have the science department. So those are four departments, agriculture, engineering, math, physics, and information technology, and the science department. Okay. Now, where are, um, these people located or where are our programs um, located? The agriculture program you are in, and the, you are based in Central Farm, right? And, and again, that is in the Kayo district here. For the science and the math, physics, and information technology for the science and MPIT, we are here in Belmopan, right? We are, we are based here in Belmopan. And for engineering department, um, it is based in Belize City. So student from student for the engineering um, um, program, when you do go, when we do go back face to face, you'll be in Belize City, right? But for right now, you are all, all are at home. So what I'm gonna do now, I will allow my um, four or three chairs and the campus administrator for um, Central Farm to go ahead and introduce themselves, right? And then tell us or introduce their program, share with you um, whatever they feel fit um, for their program. Good morning. My name is Zoe Robertson Zatina, and I'm the campus director for Central Farm, um, the Department of Agriculture. So let me see if I can share my screen. Okay, 
So welcome to University of Belize, the Department of Agriculture, and we're based, like the Dean said, in Central Farm. We offer an associate's degree in applied agriculture and a bachelor's degree in climate smart agriculture. Our campus is just over 200 acres of land space and we manage about 23 people here between faculty, staff and security personnel. We consider ourselves the best university campus in Belize and maybe the world. I love Central Farm. It's a very calm and welcoming environment and we look forward to having you here with us pretty soon. Unlike many other degree programs across the university, we do offer a practical program and therefore students will be required to come on campus to complete their practical sessions. We are doing our very best to put all the, the safety measures in place and we ask that you please adhere to these policies so that together we can remain safe and healthy. So like the Dean said, we're in the Cayo district. We're about 45 minutes out of Belmopan, about 16 minutes out of San Ignacio, 20 miles from Belmopan and 11 miles from San Ignacio. As you can see, we're just across the creek from Galen University. We're across the street from Ministry of Agriculture's Central Farm Station. We're also in the area of CARDI and Pesticide Control Board. So we consider ourselves to be in the heart of agriculture land here in the Cario District and therefore strategically located for you to get the best possible agriculture education we can possibly offer. This is what our entrance looks like. So when you're coming to our campus, you should look out for this look. This is our campus from coming from San Ignacio. Like I said, it's, it's a very beautiful campus as you can see in the picture. Why is agriculture important? Back in the 1950s or so, most of the world's land was dedicated to agriculture. But now we have a growing population and so we have to choose what are we going to do with land space. And so a lot of the agriculture land has been converted into places for us to live, work and to entertain ourselves. By, the 19, by 2050, more than half of the land space is expected to be um, transferred into populated areas for human living and entertaining. The challenge here is that we still are required to feed the population and by then it will be a significantly greater population for us to feed. With the pandemic of COVID-19, I'm sure you have seen firsthand the importance of food security in Belize and the world. It is very important for us to be able to feed ourselves as a country. And so for those of you who have chosen to be professionals within the agriculture field, I applaud you for taking this leap of faith. It is important regardless of what career path you choose, when it comes down to the very basic necessity of human life and the sustainability of that life on earth, agriculture is key because at the end of the day, we must eat to survive. So welcome to our program. Our mission is to train and develop a well-rounded student so that we can fill the industry needs. To do this, you must have a solid foundation in theory. This means that you will be going to theoretical classes. You will be required to take tests and quizzes. It's not just practical. But this theory is nurtured on a commercial farming environment. So you are required to go out and practice the things that we're teaching you in class. We want you to demonstrate the skills that you are learning so that you can become competent professionals in this industry. And those skills and that theory is nurtured by professionally trained and experienced faculty and staff. So everybody who will be teaching you have a master's degree or higher. And we think that that is something really important in our, in our department. Our vision is to train future agriculturists to be innovative and creative contributors to the sustainable development of Belize. We do not want to graduate robots. We want you to come here and to learn to think. We can't expect different results if we keep doing the same thing every day. So this is about teaching you how to be innovative, how to think critically through situations, how to analyze the data that you have, how to apply research to the challenges that are facing the agriculture sector and how to come up with solutions that will take us to the next level of sustainability within the country. 
Let me take some time to introduce you to faculty and academic support staff that we have here in Central Farm. Like I said, my name is Zoe Robertson Zatina. I'm the campus director. I teach agribusiness um, courses and I, the, I am the advisor to the bachelor degree students. There is also Mr. Adriano Vasquez. He's our crop lecturer and he specializes in pest management. Mr. Francisco Zul is very well known in the agriculture sector. He's been with us for many years. He's also a crop lecturer and he specializes in vegetable pr production under covered structure and with irrigation systems. Mr. Dan Daniel Juan is well known for his livestock influence in the Cayo district and around Belize, specifically with sheep and goat production. He's a livestock lecturer and he specializes in production nutrition and health of animals. Mr. Sergio Gomez, he's our senior technician with teaching responsibilities and he specializes in soil and agriculture marketing. Ms. Johanna Agas, she is our wellness nurse but she does so much more and we're so grateful that she's on board with us. She's pretty much our student affairs representative here on campus and she advises our associate level students. And you should have been receiving a bunch of emails from her, giving you more information about specific details of coming to Central Farm and our degree program. You should expect those emails to continue through this week and next week. And although they won't include all the academic and that type of information, you will be getting these emails from her for the duration of your career with us as she tries to promote a well-rounded student and focuses on wellness in a holistic manner. These are some pictures of our units. We do have a fully functional livestock unit. Um, we have a sheep unit, pigs, poultry, and as students, you become involved in all of this. So you see students' hair with the animals and they are dressed in their entire field attire. So we take um, personal protective gear, extremely important. And we ask that when students come, if you can please respect those policies and adhere to them, they're for your own safety and benefit. We have crop production units. So here you don't see our greenhouse structures, but you do see open field vegetable production with irrigation. And on the other side, it's our corn plots. And the people in the pictures are actually our employees. In agro-processing and marketing, we do take students out of Central Farm. Not sure how this will work this semester, but you can see here we have products and they're developed and marketed by students so that you can get that hands-on experience. Agriculture is not only about being in the field, it's a business, and it's important that you learn how to market your business and become an entrepreneur instead of simply looking for a job in the sector. So we want to be able to prepare you to be your own boss to go and build your own business. And coming out of our degree programs, you should be able to do that. There is also a micropropagation lab here in Central Farm, and you will be getting some exposure to micropropagation, although there isn't a class that is offered in this area. So again, welcome to University of Belize Central Farm. I hope that you have some insight on what will be happening at UB Central Farm. Um, on behalf of faculty and staff, we look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to Ms. Johanna Agas or myself, and we'll do our very best to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your orientation. Mr. Cayetano? Hi. Can you go ahead? Good. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, students. Um, welcome to our faculty orientation. Uh, my name is Emery Caetano, as Dr. Savory Dean had um, introduced. Um, I am the chair of engineering department. Um, um, currently, 
currently we offer three programs at the engineering department. They are um, mechanical and electrical engineering, building and civil engineering, and architectural technology. Right? Um, for these three programs, you do require you do require to have um, mathematics and physics. Um, whether or not you have technical drawing background, um, having it is an asset, but it's not mandatory. Um, we do start you off with geometry here. So um, you, you are able to acquire the, the requisite um, technical drawing skills in order to um, complete the course. We do, we have had students from um, St. Catherine's and Palote where technical drawing is not offered and they have com successfully completed the program. So not having a technical drawing background, while yes, it is, um, it is of course helpful, it's not necessarily mandatory. It does, however, help um, if you could use the summer between high school and um, entering the university to get some kind of tutoring or to familiarize yourself with technical drawing before coming here. But again, I'll repeat that it's not absolutely mandatory. All right. Um, the programs here uh, are very good. We do have a lot of um, participation with stakeholders. We have um, all of our faculty members here are qualified. Um, myself and Mr. Carrillo are two licensed architects. Um, we are in charge of the architecture um, program. You have Mr. Cal and Mr. Alvarado, who are two master degree bearers. They are in charge of um, mechanical and electrical engineering, as well as Mr. Mortis and Mr. Jones, who are also two um, master degree holders and are in charge of the building civil engineering. All right, so we, um, we are qualified here. And um, given, given the COVID-19 situation, however, most of our classes, plus some, um, will be online. Others will be blended, which means that you will have an online component as well as a face-to-face um, -face component for the practical parts of the courses. Because as you know, engineering is a very practical field of study. So there are practical things that you would be needing to do, right? Those include drawing, manual drawing, drawing by hand, the technical drawing as I was speaking about earlier. You have several labs that require you to, um, to have to be at school, right? This cannot be done online. So those, while, while the entire class may not be um, online or face-to-face, -face, it will be both, both online and the practical parts will be face-to-face. -face. All right, so um, I'll end there. We will have a program um, orientation later where we'll get into further detail regarding engineering, but I would like to welcome you guys to um, UB, to FST, and definitely to engineering, the best department in the best faculty. All right. Okay, um, good morning, students. Good morning again. And um, my name is Stephen Lewis. I am the current chair of the Math, Physics, and Information Technology Department. And as you can see, we have a list of associate degree uh, programs that we offer, as well as bachelor degree programs. We currently offer um, three associate degree programs, mathematics, math physics, and information technology, uh, the associate level, uh, of course, and we also have some combined majors. So um, we have some students taking mathematics along with chemistry. Uh, I think that's probably the only double major I'm, I'm, I'm aware of. There might be some taking math and biology, but uh, I know we have some chem math majors. At the bachelor's level, we have the mathematics, information technology, and statistics uh, programs. The statistics program being a relatively new uh, <clears throat> program. Uh, actually, we're going into our final year. And so wh what I want to do is to just briefly share um, this, this PowerPoint for our department. All right, so as I mentioned before, we have a number of programs that, that we offer. Um, 
We have uh, some general goals for each program for the associate and bachelor's degree in mathematics. Uh, the programs are committed to enhancing creativity and self-development in our students to adequately integrate them into the productive sector of our society and also to pursue further studies. We have a number of program objectives, uh, some of which include producing students who are competent uh, in statistical and mathematically related jobs. Uh, for our associate degree in math and physics, it's a, a dual uh, subject program. And the mission is to prepare students to successfully pursue their undergraduate studies in physics, mathematics, and uh, engineering and or for employment in related fields. Um, we also have a, a graduate profile for that program. Uh, uh, included in some of those points is the whole matter of being prepared to enter the workforce uh, in any related field or where there's need for someone with the ability to think critically. We have our associates and bachelor's degree program or programs in information technology. And the mission is to prepare students for work, further study and or further research in the IT field locally, regionally and globally. And there's a very high demand for our IT graduates and extremely uh, good program. The, in terms of our graduate profile for these programs, uh, some include uh, the whole matter of developing students that are committed to ethical action and social responsibility. Uh, professional citizens with global perspectives. Uh, we also have extracurricular activities that include the Math Physics Club. Uh, we also have an annual math symposium. We see how that works this year with the online setting that, that we currently have. We have an IT club, uh, ACM Belize chapter. We're part of the Association of Computing Machines, uh, uh, math help centers, exchange programs. Again, we see how all of these things work given the current situation that we're faced with. And yes, as a department, we prepare you to not only become teachers, but junior system administrators, consultants, physicians, uh, network technicians, computer programmers, statisticians, data analysts, web developers, so on and so forth. Uh, we have some entry requirements, uh, mathematics, IT, English, uh, cumulative uh, grade point averages are highlighted there. Uh, math and IT, obviously extremely important. English also very important. But as we break out into our program orientation sessions later, uh, you'll be getting some more details uh, regarding uh, the nature of our programs. But again, welcome, welcome to the faculty, welcome to uh, the program uh, and the department. Those of you who signed up for programs within our department. And yes, we are the best department within the Faculty of Science and Technology. Thank you. All right, good morning, everybody. I am uh, Dr. Apollonio Aguilar, Chair of the Science Department. I am not sure if you can, can everybody hear me? Yes, okay. So the science department is the biggest department at the, um, in the Faculty of Science and Technology. We have a large number of faculty. We also have lab technicians, field technicians. Um, so we have a big group of people working in the science department. Um, we have multiple degrees. Uh, can you see me? Yes, okay. So we have multiple degrees that we offer. We offer associates and bachelor's degrees. For the associate's degrees, we offer associates in biology, in chemistry, in natural resource management. We also have combined degrees, for example, the, for example, the associates in biology and chemistry, and we also have the associate in chemistry and math. Um, for bachelor's degrees, we have bachelor's in biology, bachelor's in natural resource management, bachelor's in marine biology, and the marine biology program is a four-year program. So as soon as you start off, um, as soon as you start off, you start with, a, with your sequence for four years. And then we have a bachelor's in chemistry. Now, uh, you will be breaking off into subgroups. And for each of these program orientations, you will be getting details about your programs. But let me just give you a little bit of an overview of what we have in our, in our department. So we are centered 
in, uh, in the central campus in Belmopan. And we have, as I said, a lot of faculty with science with all of these different um, majors. Several of our faculty are engaged in a lot of research. So we pride ourselves in having our programs being very hands-on. We have, of course, the book learning. We have the, the classes that you take, but we also have the labs. We have internships. We have thesis that students do. So several of the faculty are engaged in research. Um, we have several water quality monitoring projects. We have sargassum uh, monitoring and research projects. There's microbiology work that is being done in connection with several of these other projects. Uh, we have a faculty member doing dung beetle research. Uh, we also have the chemistry faculty doing um, research on materials that can be produced here in Belize. We, some of our chemistry students will do research at institutions such as Baja and Forensics, the National Forensic Science Service. Our NRM students uh, do internships at NGOs and national park services, both inland and offshore. And again, as you can see, we are very hands-on. There's a lot of practical uh, aspects to the courses. Um, then marine biology program, for example, there's a major aspect of it where students go to Kalabashki Research Station and do some, some, uh, some diving and some research there. So we are very proud and excited to have our students doing much more than just this uh, uh, book learning. We do have a lot of practical aspects. They get great, useful, hands-on experience and training. In addition, we have several clubs. Um, the entire faculty has multiple, uh, a lot of clubs that, are, um, that the students are engaged in. In our department, we have the chemistry club and the environmental club. And we have a campus beautification club and even an orchid club. So um, that's just an overview of some of the, uh, some of the aspects of the science department. Um, when we break off into the different, different uh, program orientations, you'll be getting a little bit more details of what each of those programs is, is, uh, is about. I'll ask Dr. Polonia to do his presentation on online office procedure and virtual meeting. Okay. Are those in the, let me go through those slides. I'll have to share my screen. Yes, you have to. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, so due to the current situation with the pandemic, we are encouraging students to do all of their communications electronically. I know that you as new students would like to see us and know that we are there to assist you. So we can do all of this electronically. We have students normally come into the office for uh, asking questions about where to find things and and where do they do this? Where do they submit these forms? Who do they need to talk to and so on? So we have outlined here uh, a few things, tasks that need to be done off as office work. So online assistance, these are the things that will be provided to you in assistance uh, online. So generally online assistance, this outlines how you will be doing, dealing with withdrawals, with late withdrawals, program change, even registration, which you are going to be doing next week advising, uh, which you will be doing in the next couple of days, tomorrow and Friday. If you have questions regarding graduation later on in your career, if you, have, if you uh, defer or if you um, leave the university for a couple of semesters and you come back, you, can, you will have some admission questions as well. If you near the end of your career, you may need letters of recommendation. You need to request those of your advisors or your instructors. Um, or individual meetings with students. So all of these things, we are now encouraging students to do them online and virtually, electronically by email or with meetings. 
So let me give you some information that you will need to, to be able to contact the necessary people. So for online support, there is the Office of Distance Learning, and they are available online for students, faculty, and staff during this period where we need to, everything is going to go online. So if you need assistance with any, with math and English placement exams, for example, please contact Tyra Arana at tarana at uv.edu.bz. For assistance with your e-learning courses, for example, the Moodle, if you are having trouble with Moodle, uh, um, accessing Moodle services and so on, please contact Dr. Beverly uh, Faber at bfaber at uv.edu.bz. If you have any other queries regarding this ODL, the Open, Open Distance Learning Office, you can email odl at uv.edu.bz or you can uh, contact them at the help desk at www.odlub.com. Now, if you have any problems with your email, some students may not have access to their email, may have forgotten passwords or can't, don't know how to use some of it or to log on, please contact ICT at ub.edu.bz. Now, those are the general contacts for the broader uh, university. If you have academic concerns, things with your program, with your classes, so you are to contact these people. So for academic concerns, questions pertaining to academics, if you have to deal with withdrawal from a class, if you are, have concerns about your class sessions, and we're going to talk about um, in the program uh, orientation, we're going to talk about some classes being synchronous or asynchronous, and you will learn what those are in, uh, this, in the later sessions. Uh, your assessments, your, your quizzes and tests that you will be given, or your grades. You are to contact your lecturers. Now, how do you contact your lecturers? You contact them first by email. Just as you have your email address, you, yours is your id at ub.edu.bz. Lecturers' email addresses are the first letter of the, the first name followed by their last name. So my name is Apollonio Aguilar. My email is A for Apollonio and Aguilar. There's no period, no space. It's just A, A-G-U-I-L-A-R. So if you know that you sh and you should know the name of your lecturer, you can uh, create their email address. So mine is A Aguilar, A-A-G-U-I-L-A-R at ub.edu.bz. And here we have an example for John Doe would be jdoe at ub.edu.bz. Now, there are a few lecturers whose emails aren't exactly uh, that way. Like, for example, the chair, Mr. Lewis here, his, he's Stephen Lewis, but his is so lewis at ub.edu.bz. So please make sure to check that you are sending the, the correct email. We just have a general way of creating those email addresses. But you should have that information from the program sequences, from your uh, course outlines. Just to, in, just to interject here, Dr. Aguilar, my, my wife lectures at the University of Belize as well. Her email address is slois at ub.bz. Okay. Therefore, mine is slois. So make sure you send your emails to slois at ub.edu.bz. If you send it to my wife, I might not get the email, okay? Okay. All right. So um, if you have questions with program change, for example, it, with registration that you will be doing next week or with advising, you have been told, you have been sent by email who your advisor is. And you also know who your chair is. So you can contact uh, your advisor or chair for, for any of these, for program changes, for registration or advising. And again, use the emails, um, this format for emails. If you have questions with transcripts, uh, graduation status, so later on to ensure that you are meeting your graduation requirements, uh, or resignation for a semester or for a year because of some circumstance and you need to leave the university for a while, you do a resignation form. Uh, you contact records for that at records at uv.edu.bz. Admissions for applications to be readmitted, admissions at uv.edu.bz. You can always contact your chair or dean if you need further assistance. Now, other support for account information, if you need to contact accounts receivables, email ar at uv.edu.bz. 
for student affairs, Dr. Uh, Martin Coyar is very helpful, always, always on and very willing to help, Martin Coyar, mcoyar at uv.edu.bz. And if you have no idea who to contact, no, don't know where to go, which you should have a general idea right now, right? But if you have no idea, you can email concerns at uv.edu.bz and your query will be directed to the specific office. Now, here we have information that's specific to our faculty here. Um, if you have uh, any issues with your class, class information with lecturers, please make sure to contact your lecturers. For other matters not outlined there, you can contact the dean or chair of your department copying the secretary. So make sure that when you send your emails to the dean or to chairs, please copy the secretaries because they can ensure that we follow up on those issues. So the dean's email address, the dean is Dr. Charlene Enriquez Savory. Her email is senriquez at uv.edu.bz. These are the very important emails for you to know. The secretary is Ms. Judy Ellis, judy.ellis at uv.edu.bz. For Central Farm, you have the director, Ms. Zoe Zatina, zzatina at uv.edu.bz. Then for engineering, we have Mr. Emery Cayetano is the chair, E. Cayetano. And the secretary, Ms. Crystal Rodriguez, C. Rodriguez, with a Z at the end. For the math, physics, and information technology department, Mr. Stephen Lewis is the chair. So you would email solewis at uv.edu.bz. And his secretary is Ms. Diane Rodriguez, D. Rodriguez at uv.edu.bz with a Z at the end for the Rodriguez. And for the science department, you can contact me. I'm Dr. Apollonio Aguilar, A. Aguilar. And our secretary is Ms. Leilani Badillo, L. Badillo at uv.edu.bz. Now we will try, we will be contacting you within two working days. So when you send your email, remember that everybody else is sending emails, but we'll try to, we'll get in contact with you as soon as possible and we'll do so within two working days. So again, for the processes online, students can email the lecturer, chair, or dean of the faculty for assistance. And then we encourage that students do so online. For issues that cannot be dealt with by email, we, if you are sending forms, for example, you can send the, email by, uh, the form by email and we can process it further. And we'll copy you in that process as we send the email through, if it goes from the lecturer to the chair, to the dean, and so on. We'll copy you on those emails so you know what is going on. Now, if it cannot be, if it's not just a simple form, um, we can arrange meetings via Google Meet using your UB, your official UB email address. So this is why we are ensuring that students use their UB email. This UB email is Google-based, both for students and faculty. So since everybody is using the same system, we can use all of, the, all of the resources that are available. So for these Google Meets, they're going to be virtual sessions, just like how this Zoom session is and the sessions that we're having for the programs, you will be having one-on-one -on -one meetings with your faculty, with your advisor in, on Thursday and Friday. And in the future, when, you're, when, you're, when you need to have a meeting, just send an email request to the person that you need to have the meeting with, and they will set it up. Now you have received an email containing a YouTube link that tells you how you are to access these uh, Google Meets. So please take a look at that YouTube video that will tell you how you can accept meetings, how you go to your calendar to open the event and just join the meeting. So we, once you have set up, once you have sent an email to the faculty, either the Dean, Chair, or your advisor or your instructor, we will set it in the calendar and we will invite you. All you need to do is accept. Um, if the time that we recommend is not, uh, you are not available for that time, feel free to express that to the lecturer or to the chair or dean, and we will try to find another time that is that will accommodate both. Um, so then you, all you need to do is then accept that meeting. Now you will be doing some uh, filling out forms online. Again, everything will be by email. So there are forms sometimes that you need to fill out. Now, I know most of you have opened PDF forms and you see that you cannot type in 
on the PDF form as you can in a Word document. But the free Adobe Reader, everybody can access this. Everybody has Adobe Reader, Adobe Acrobat Reader. You, this is a free download. Once you open your PDF on there, this tells you how you can fill it in and sign it. You don't need a paid Adobe software for this. So all you do is take your file, your PDF file that you need to fill in, open it using your Adobe Reader. At the top of the menu, and if you look here on the screen, um, there is on the top of the menu, you will see the fill and sign option. It's this yellow, uh, I think it's behind the, the image, but there's a yellow uh, highlight, which looks, is on an icon that looks like the tip of a fountain pen. If you click on this, then it will open the fill and sign menu, which looks like this down here. So in this fill and sign menu, I have highlighted two things, the sign option and the, this one has a text. You can then type in anywhere, type text anywhere on your PDF file. So once you click on this, you go anywhere on your PDF and you, it will open a little box, text box, and you can type in whatever it is that you need to fill in the PDF with. Now, if you're using your Adobe Acrobat on your personal computer or your laptop, you can add your signature to your Adobe Reader. So if you go to sign, which is highlighted yellow here, Click on sign, it'll open up a sub menu where it gives you the option to enter your signature. So all I suggest that you do is take a sign on a white piece of paper, take a picture of that signature and save it as a JPEG on your laptop. Then click on sign, it opens up signature. There's a little plus sign there, click on that plus sign and it gives you the option to upload that signature. That signature will be uploaded to your Adobe Reader. So anytime you open a PDF document that you need to sign, you can then click on the signature and it will pop up with your signature and you can place it anywhere on the document, okay? Now, that tells you how you are to fill in your forms. This is supposed to make this office work a lot easier. And not something that we're asking you to do to make the, the processing of these e easier is that you adhere to naming formats that we have. Now, we are asking that when you create your, once you have filled in your form, the way that you name it, you name it using this format. First, use the type of document, dash your last name, comma your first name, dash course code if it is relevant, dash semester, for example, this semester is 2020 dash one, and then letter stage. Letter stage, I'll explain in just a little bit when I show you the example. So for example, if you're doing an incomplete form, let's say you have a course that you couldn't finish, and you need to fill out an incomplete form so that you can finish it at a later date. You write in the name incomplete form dash your last name, comma your first name, John, comma do, dash this is the course code. This is a biology course, bio 4992. So this is the way that the course codes look. This won't be relevant for everything because some things are not uh, related to courses, some forms. Then your semester 2020-1. And here, as it is processed, we, I have here IACD. When your instructor, when you sign and you give it to your instructor, your instru instructor signs and they save it with an I behind here. And then they will pass this on to your advisor. If your advisor then signs, they will add on the A to this, to the name. And then as this process goes on, it goes to the chair, the chair signs and adds the C to the name. And then it goes on to the dean, the dean puts a D to the name. And so this allows us to be able to process all of this office work very readily and organize and be very organized so that nothing gets lost. Okay. So that's it for um, our processes online. I just want to reiterate again, if you need to fill in forms, send them my email to the person that you need to send them and it will be further processed. If you need to have a meeting, there's something that is not just a form and cannot be answered just by email, we can set up a Google Meet. Again, you have all been sent a YouTube link for um, accessing these Google Meets. Send an email to the lecturer, advisor, chair, or dean, and they will set, we will set a meeting and we'll add it to the calendar. You will receive an email and you just open the email and click on yes, 
to the time, or if you need another time, a different time, you can request that as well. It will be added to your calendar. And then on your, let me show you here on your, if you go to your email, on the top right, there are nine little buttons that are the Google Apps. You click on there to go to your calendar. And you click on the calendar. It opens up your calendar, and you can see the event. All you need to do when it's time for that meeting that was scheduled, click on the event in your calendar. And you, it will open up another window that has join with Google Meets. Click on that, and, you will be, and it will open a window for your Google Meets. And just be there and wait for your instructor, advisor, chair, or dean to join you for that meeting. Now, if you are, if it is impossible to sort your issue using the virtual meetings, which I think would be very convenient for everybody because you don't need to go into campus, but if you absolutely cannot do it through the virtual meetings, then we encourage that you set up a meeting for face-to-face -face and set up an appointment and we can meet you on campus. And that's it for the um, office procedures. Dr. Savory, let me stop presenting. Thank you, Dr. Aguilar. So for the next few minutes, um, I will be discussing the role of advisors. This is very, very important um, for you students, uh, especially for, um, for you to progress or for you to proceed through the, your academic um, plan and your academic time here, your, 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 your time here with us smoothly and with less stress. Now, your advisor will meet with each advise you, each of you during orientation to assist student with registration and your initial um, adjustment to university academic life. So you will meet with your advisors individually um, between tomorrow, Thursday, and sometime Friday. So look out for that email, um, sign on, log into the meeting, and come with questions. And um, um, whatever questions you have, um, your advisor will be able to assist you further um, with your questions. So you will meet with your advisor um, in the program meeting after, you will not meet your advisor in the program meeting, but you'll meet your, pro your advisor individually, right? Next slide, Stephen. Your advisor should help you define and develop realistic educational career plan through planning for each semester. And I include summer school, um, summer school also, if appropriate. Each student should have an up-to-date academic schedule plan and um, along with your program sequence, you have received your program sequence um, in an email. So make sure you have your program sequence with you um, throughout um, the semester. Whenever you go for advising, this is something that you will um, keep, you will be held um, accountable or against accountable to that program sequence that you start with from the time you start, you'll be until graduation. When So when it's time for graduation, um, uh, um, your, your requirements and everything will be um, based on the program sequence that you, that you start with. So your advisor will um, guide you and explain further that program sequence with you. The, the advisor is also um, supposed to monitor your progress toward educational goal and meet at least once each um, semester to review the progress toward completing the program and to discuss grade and other performance indicator. Now, there are times, like Dr. Aguilar had mentioned, uh, when you will need your advisor's signature to complete some required forms, such as overload forms, add and drop forms, and withdrawal forms. So keep that in mind and follow the procedure. If you don't, have, if you don't understand and have questions, just email the secretary and they will advise you and guide you in how to get those signatures. Now, when it comes to advising, um, it is um, the, the advisee, you student, also is an equal partner in the advising process. As an advisee, you are ultimately responsible for your educational choices and decision. You are expected to clarify personal values, ability, interests, and goals um, for academic and for life to your advisors. Um, contact and schedule regular appointment. You are responsible to contact and schedule regular appointment with your advisor each semester as required or when um, need of assistance. Prepare for advising session and bring appropriate uh, resources or material. You are um, to maintain your own advising folder or your advising portfolio, um, including your program sequence and other details. 
keep a folder just aside, keep a folder aside um, that you put all your information in, all your required, your receipts, your program sequence, and you keep that as your um, advising portfolio or as your UB portfolio. And whenever you go for advising, you can bring that with you um, so you can have everything prepared and in one place. Come prepare um, to your regi uh, registration um, advising session with a planned schedule for forthcoming semester. Become knowledgeable and adhere to institutional policies, procedures, and requirements. Right? Now, um, for the breakout session, immediately after this faculty orientation, you will have um, program orientation. You have received the invitation. You're supposed to have received the invitation for the program orientation. So once this meeting is um, ended, you can log on and click on to the next meeting, and that will be just specifically for your program. Um, for the MPIT, Math, Physics, and IT, all four meetings will be happening simultaneously immediately after this session. Um, associate in Math and Biology student um, um, at 10, let's say like 10.30 after we finish, we have a, a, a separate meeting for associate in mathematics and physics, a separate meeting for associate in IT and bachelor's degree in IT. And then we have a separate meeting for the bachelor's in statistics student. Okay. The, same thing, for the same thing for the science student. Can yes, I just yes. quickly, um, <clears throat> for the associate in uh, IT and the bachelor's in IT program orientation, uh, Mr. David Aguilar and um, Mr. David Garcia, sorry, David, and Mr. Manuel Medina will be uh, meeting using the Zoom platform. So they have already sent out those invites to their students and to all faculty alike. Okay, so students on the platform now, uh, please make sure you check your emails for the link to the Zoom meeting for the IT uh, associate and bachelor program orientation. The other programs will be meeting using the, the Google Meet platform, okay? Thank you, Mr. Steven. Um, so for IT and um, associate in bachelor and um, associate in IT and bachelor's in IT, again, you will be meeting in the Zoom um, platform. For the science, the same thing. All four programs will be meeting in um, Google Meet. We have the associate and bachelor's degree in biology. We have the bachelor's in marine biology student. We have the associate and bachelor's in NRM. We have the associate and bachelor's in chemistry. Separate meeting happening simultaneously immediately after this. So just log on if you belong to, um, just log on to your specific group or log on to the email that you received from the secretary or from the, um, from the team leader yesterday or earlier today. For engineering, again, we have three simultaneous meeting occurring. Um, associate in building and civil engineering, associate in mechanical, and electrical and associate in architectural technology. And then we have agriculture, all the um, program, both programs will be meetings uh, at the same time. So they'll have one program meeting. You're supposed to have received your, your, your link. Um, so immediately after we finish, um, we will ask you to sign on to your meeting. And then we have um, those that are double majors, right? Uh, for double majors, we will meet at 1 o'clock today, 1 p.m. today. Uh, we have um, associate in bachelor and chemistry and associate in chemistry and mathematics. Your program meeting session is at 1 p.m. Um, today. So you can rest and then you come back online at 1 o'clock. Again, um, it will be on Google Meet, except for the IT student. They will be meeting in the Zoom, using the Zoom um, platform. If you have not received your, 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 your invitation, as soon as we finish, you can send us um, uh, an email and then we will try to forward it to you um, as soon as possible, right? So we wanna say thank you and um, welcome to UV, welcome to FST, welcome to our family. If you have any question, I will ask that you take that question. I will give you at least like two minutes to ask your question in the question and answer section. Uh, we will try to answer them as, 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 as quick as possible. And if not, take your question to the program session and ask, and then there will be lecturers and instructors and your, your advisors there that will um, try to answer your question as much as possible. So for right now, yeah. we will look at the answer, question and answer section and try to answer any question. Go ahead and put your question if so, you have any questions so regarding Steve, to the faculty. 
there's a student who asked um, a question about what is the estimated number of students that will be in labs. So we have tried to minimize the number of students in labs. Uh, we are, it'll be 10 to 12 students per session. So we have enough space to have social distancing for that. We're going to try to have 10 students in each lab session. So you will be in a section, but it will be divided into two groups. They will come on alternating alternating weeks, but this will be explained in the program in the program orientation. And uh, there was another question about repeating the stage letter. There's instructor, advisor, chair, and dean. There's I A C D. Those are the letters for that. And this presentation is being recorded, and it will be shared with you all at the end of the meeting. All of the orientation meetings, the one here, the Zoom meeting, as well as the um, program meetings will be recorded. Now the program meetings uh, on Google Meet, you can see them. You must accept the invitation though. And after the meeting is over, the video will be generated and will be in your calendar in the event. So you can just go to the event, click on it and look at the video. Can I also comment here, um, the link for the, I, the associate and bachelor's degree program orientation uh, is also in the chat, right? So you can see the Zoom link for the AINT and BINT orientation. Um, and that will start at 10.30. I think we're pushing to start all the program orientation sessions at 10.30. And that should run to 12 noon, okay? Any other questions? I'm browsing through the question to see if we miss any question. Will classes eventually resume on campus? We hope so. The plan is for next semester, but we don't know given the current um, pandemic, right? So um, for right now, my answer is, I don't know, um, but the plan is for us to resume next semester if all goes well. But it's all dependent on the, the, the state of the um, country. Any other question? Okay, I think that's it for question. Did I miss any? I think that's it. So I want to say thank you for participating today. Thank you to the team. Thank you, student. Welcome again. And I hope you have, I know you have learned a lot today and it's, it might be too much, but remember, um, I, I guarantee you that as the semester progress and as the semester go through, it, it becomes a little bit more familiar, right? So enjoy your, the rest of your day and, and, and all the best on your, um, your, your, your time here with us at University of Belize. Welcome again, everyone, and have a good program orientation session. Please click on accept to the program orientation sessions and then join the meetings. Welcome and looking forward to hearing and seeing you guys, um, be it online or face-to-face. -face. Um, we're here to serve. <laughs>